Merchandise fees for bands in the live music industry have been a really big hot topic over the past couple years. And that's kind of funny to me because merchandise fees have literally existed for decades, but for some reason it's the last couple years that all these bands have started talking about it. Maybe they feel comfortable. They can finally let their fans know how this stuff works because there's a nonstop discussion about this. I mean, bands are essentially giving venues money based on their merchandise that they sold. And there's a lot of arguments for and against this, but we've seen bands talk about it from stage. We've seen bands recently announce that they're not selling merch at their shows because of high fees. Like it's wild. Like fans have more access to this kind of information more so than they ever have before. And today I have something huge that I'm going to throw into this discussion too, because I was just sent a piece of information regarding all of this from a band that kind of blew me away. And it actually kind of changed the way that I've been thinking about this lately as a former touring merchandise manager to the point where I looked at this and I couldn't believe it at first. So what is this game changing piece of information that I've been given? Well, it's an actual cost and expense breakdown of a merchandise settlement sheet for one show for a very well-known touring band. And I will say, for those of you that are waiting for a name drop, it's not gonna happen. That was one of the conditions that they told me I could use this. They said their band name has to remain anonymous. And I get their logic when they gave this to me. They said, hey, there are things that people should know, that fans should know about how this business works, but as a band, it's a little taboo to talk about these things publicly. There are certain business things that it would be weird for us to be very open about. But you have a YouTube channel that you can be open on. And as long as you don't say who it is, you can go ahead and use this. So that's what we're going to do. I will say I have no reason to believe that this has been manipulated or exaggerated or anything. Based on the band that it is, they are extremely professional I trust that they would be 100% honest with this, but keep in mind, this did come directly from the band. It wasn't like I settled this show. All the numbers we're reading came from their settlement and breakdown that they gave me. But let's just jump into this, man, because if I'm being honest, I haven't even really taken the time to go down the whole thing. I just looked at the top number and the bottom number to see the difference and was just like, all right, well, I want to break this down, but I want to do it on camera. So right now is the first time I'm going to do a deep dive. Let's go. All right, let's rip through this thing line by line. As you can see, this is kind of what a normal merch settlement would actually look like, except towards the bottom half, they have all of their actual expenses related to merch for the tour. So while that is not something that would be included on normal merchandise settlements, that gives you a very good idea of what your actual profit is. And as you can see, the very top gross sales number, 126,500 euros. And after all of this band's expenses relating to the show, they made 10,156 euros. That is less than 10% of the gross total that they actually sold. Actually is eight. They put that on there and that's pre-taxes. Dude, no joke. This kind of changes how I've been thinking about merchandise lately. Cause I've said in many of my videos, as a former merchandise manager, I feel like if a venue is doing something for you, then yes, you can give them a cut. But there are many venues where you just walk in and they charge you 25% just for selling, which I don't agree with. But after seeing all these expenses, man, we're going to have to think about this for a second because this some of this just eyeballing it as well. But let's start at the top. Ticket sales. It says 11,000 tickets sold for a sold out show. Obviously, that's an arena show, but 11,000 is probably an approximation because th there's no way that they sold exactly on the dot 11,000. Like, there's probably a little more or a little less than that. But anyways, uh, sales per head on the next line is 11 and a half euros. And basically what that number tells you as a merchandise manager or as a merchandise supplier is how many dollars on average... The that each person at the show is going to spend. So based on their gross total and how many people were at the show, that means that every single person at that show on average spent 11 and a half euros on merch. But here we go for the big number. This band grossed 126,500 euros 
for this show. That is gross merchandise sales, all of the merchandise that was sold at the table before any kind of fees. But let's get into the concession fees, which is your merch fee and stuff on the next line. Um, they paid out 28%, but there is a note here on the side that it says it's including the credit card fee taken from gross sales, local sellers, and venue cost is unknown, but 25 plus 3% is the concession. So 3% is the credit card fee, which means they had a 25% merchandise fee for the show, including the credit cards, making that 28%. That is 35,420 euros that they paid directly to the venue for a fee. But then one of the ongoing topics that we talk about too is the VAT sales tax, which is a very European thing. You don't see stuff this high on North American uh, merchandise settlements. The VAT for this venue is 25%. Uh, taken from the gross sales again, uh, there's also a note that says the example here is from Sweden. So I got to assume that this show was in Sweden, if that's why we have this VAT. 25% of the gross is 31,625 euros. So already this band has given away 66,000, almost 67,000 euros right off the bat. Holy sh**. Um, I mean, it's funny that I'm saying holy sh** because, you know, I've done this stuff kind of stuff for years, but I mean, that's over half of your gross total right there. I mean, the VAT is what really does it on this one. But uh, let's continue on. Manufacturing for one show. Uh... The note says, depends a bit on what items are being sold. Some have higher cost versus profit. This is basically a t-shirt of high quality for approximately eight euros manufacturing costs, average numbers. So the manufacturing for one show cost them 27,830 euros. So that is what they spent on merchandise to have it available for the fans at the show. Their insurance cost is in here, and this is just in case of tour cancellations, accidents, theft, stuff like that. But they do have to pay insurance, uh, 3,289 euros. And then we move on to their crew cost for the shows, approximately 400 euros salary per show, plus catering, bus bunks and days off, count-ins, setups, loading, on-tour counting, instructing local sellers and refilling stands. So. That gives you their job duties and what they're looking at on tour. But that cost for this show is 2,500 euros. Then they also have a line item for scraps, displays, and giveaways. Uh, the note says this scales down from higher per show on smaller venues. So what that means is if they're playing at a smaller venue, they're going to have la less giveaways and less displays and scraps and stuff like that. But this particular show is 630 euros. Uh, crew hotels, three rooms approximately every three days, uh, two shows and then a day off, 400 euros. Next line says consultant merchandise manager for advancing settlements, logistics planning, setups of, uh, setups of payments, calculation of orders, negotiations for concessions and more. This sounds like somebody that's at an office that's not on tour, that's handling all of their, uh, advancing and accounting at a home office. Um, probably arranging shipments and stuff like that. This is probably an office person's pay that's been uh, prorated and built into the show. So that's 500 euros. Uh, flights for the crew to and from the tour, including some trains, taxis, parkings, extra rooms, 100 euros. That's it. Oh, wait, this is divided over the shows of the whole tour. So that makes sense. So it would be built into this show as 100 euros as an expense. Uh, trucking and logistics, one dedicated merchandise truck, sometimes have to have a double driver, ferries, hotels per show cost, including days off, start and stop 2000 euros per merchandise breakdown. That's wild. Uh, graphic design is for the art designer that did the merch for the tour divided per show, 1600 euros. All right. Future tank interjecting into my video while I'm editing. I just realized, I think that 1600 number is actually a typo, an error. Uh, it says 3,840 euros for the art designer for the tour divided per show. I believe that should say 160 euros per show and not 1,600. 
That's not a huge difference in the grand scheme of all of this, but that is about a $1,500 difference. So for the rest of the video, keep in mind when we get to those net totals, it's going to be about $1,500 higher than what's on this paper. And then you get into some other stuff that they had to spend money on, like their displays for Merch World, lamps, cables, all that stuff. Uh, again, this is divided per show cost. Two Merch Worlds were built plus the outside cube trucks. Okay, so they had an outside um, vendor as well. But the cost for all that was 250 euros. Um, economic administration divided per show cost, accounting, arranging salaries, invoices, and tax advisory. Uh, 200 euros, a uh, cube slash selling truck for selling outside the venue, including crew logistics, design, and extra security. So this is basically, they have their own trailer that they're pulling for a pop-up shop outside of the venues for people to buy merch while they're leaving or before they come in. That is 10,000 euros right there. That's a pretty big expense. Uh, my, my thought on that Unless your outside stand is really selling a lot more than some of the ones inside are, 10,000 euros per show, that's a hefty fee just to have an outside stand. But I don't know what kind of numbers that outside stand is doing. So that's just me looking at it for face value. So their total costs with everything built in, again, you've got your merch fee, your VAT, your manufacturing, and then all of the expenses that go into running this merch operation, 116,344 euros, which nets the band 10,156 euros. 8%. This band, if these numbers are accurate, which again, I, I, I have no reason to believe they're not, but we have to put that asterisk there because they gave these to me. 8% of what you're selling for a gross? Holy f man. Like... That's crazy. That that seems wild to me. Like just, just looking at all these numbers, it's like you gross 126,000 euros in merchandise at your own show, yet your actual take-home profit on that is 10,000 euros. Pre-taxes. That's the other thing too. They haven't even paid out their actual taxes as a business for this stuff. So looking at that right now, I mean... It's kind of made me approach my thought on merchandise fees a little differently because as I've said, I mean, you're doing business in somebody else's venue. A lot of these venues, I got to assume at this one, were helping them sell. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, although it does say on that concession line, local sellers and venue costs is unknown. So I got to assume they had local vendors for this. But think about that. The bands themselves have all these costs to eat. Like paying the crew salary, the hotels, the printing costs, the logistics, the transportation, like the bands are eating all of these costs, but the venues are just taking their 25% of whatever is coming in off the gross. I, that's, that's bonkers, dude. Like this venue got $35,000 from this show, from the merchandise, yet the band is profiting 10. The venues are making more money than the bands. From, from their own merchandise. That's what this sheet is telling me. And again, I'm a little surprised by this. Like I've, I've done merchandise for years and years before I became a guitar tech and a tour manager, but I've never, because I was a touring merch manager, I never had to do the accounting side of this where I was throwing in like costs and stuff like that. And I've never really thought about it, but dude, if that's what kind of costs bigger bands are eating, like I can't imagine what some of the smaller bands are profiting or not profiting for that matter. And that's one of the things we've talked about on this channel a ton, man. It's like a lot of bigger bands uh, are, are surviving okay at this point, but a lot of smaller mid-sized bands with all these costs and inflation and everything going on, it's gotta be hard to survive, man. And there are some things that we could we could take a look on this and, and maybe scratch some things to try and make more money again. Maybe that outside cube pop-up truck could go away or you know, you get somebody cheaper to do your artwork, but if you have pride in your stuff, you're not going to do that. You just want the best merchandise. Um, and that manufacturing cost is pretty on par. I mean, eight euros on average for manufacturing cost is, is not what I would consider high. So God, this is just kind of mind blowing, man. And like, you kind of look at this and you wonder, okay, $10,000, all of that work and set up and ordering for $10,000. Is it worth it? 
you look at it on paper and you're like 8% is what our profit is and it's probably not worth it. But you got to think over 20 shows, that's 200,000 euros in, in pure profit. Well, pre-tax profit again, but that pays for a lot of things. Like I'm, I'm not talking about the band taking home money. I'm talking that's going to pay for a lot of things on the road. And a lot of bands do rely on merch to pay for their crew salaries and their production rentals and stuff like that. Like there's a lot that goes into it, but, uh, that's wild, man. I I'm not going to lie. I am surprised that 8% is the number. But well, what do you guys think, man? You guys are the fans. You're the ones going to shows and buying this merchandise. Does this surprise you? Does this make you want to support the bands more or, or, or maybe less considering you see how much uh, venues are taking from them? Stuff like that. I mean, this is a conversation that needs to be continued with fans and bands alike. I actually do think this is a very important thing. You know, a lot of people mistakenly say that these merch fees exist because post pandemic venues are trying to recover. That's not true. Merchandise fees have been around for a very, very long time. This is not really a new thing. The big issue here is that a lot of these merchandise fees for some of these smaller and mid-level bands is that the venues aren't doing anything for them. They're just pointing to a corner and saying, there's your table, go set up. And then you owe us 20% at the end of the night, which, you know, uh, people would make the argument, well, you're selling in their building. And that's, I, I get that argument as a former merch manager too, but like, the more and more I see these numbers, man, the more and more I I'm just like, uh, I just don't know how some bands are going to survive. I really don't, man. But anyways, that's going to be it. I could sit here and speculate and talk about that forever, but I do want to know your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't think the end of this conversation is coming anytime soon. So be on the lookout. We might talk about this more, but thank you guys for watching until next time, wherever you are in the world, be safe, be kind to each other. I love you all. While you're at it, click subscribe if you haven't, give it a like, whatever. But uh, I'll be back very soon with another video.